Compromise or court? Amazon meeting with FTC Chair Lena Khan next week in a last-ditch attempt to avoid an antitrust lawsuit. The e-commerce giant has long been a target of Chair Khan, who has favored litigating cases over settling the issues out of court. But with a recent string of high-profile losses, could Chair Khan shift her tactics in her crusade against Big Tech? Let's bring in Axios business editor Dan Primack. Dan, great to have you with us. Um, is she smelling defeat? Is she going to go another route this time? What do you think? I mean, it's interesting, you know, when you look at the FTC and, and under Khan, kind of the losses have all been when it comes to big tech, right? She's won a bunch of cases or there have been abandoned mergers kind of in smaller things, but it's been big tech where she's had the problems. Microsoft and Activision, uh, Facebook slash Meta and this little company called Within. Uh, I, I mean, it seems like she is going after Amazon. All the reports are Amazon FTC commissioners are going to meet the next week. That's considered what they consider a so-called last rights. It's it's kind of like let's try to work things out, but no one's really terribly confident. It, it's more kind of shake hands and, and and let's go to court. I think there's going to be a lawsuit. The specifics of it, though, what we really don't know is how broad she's going to go. In other words, a, a widespread breakup of Amazon or how narrow she might go. I mean, you know, she was hired to be an activist sort of FTC chair to to really challenge big tech to go after them. And so, is it enough? for her to bring these lawsuits and lose. Is that still winning in the FTC's view? And no. I think that's you know important to understand in, in terms of you know what big tech potentially has to lose because maybe it has to lose nothing by being sued except for legal costs and, and a headache. I think one thing that's true is that the FTC stance and arguably DOJ too uh, in the Biden administration has not only stopped certain mergers, either through court or through threat of court, but there's certain deals that probably you and I just never heard of because they never even got to the serious negotiation stage just because the parties thought, you know what, we're going to get sued by the FTC. Even if we're going to win, it's going to be a lot of cost and a lot of time. It's not worth the risk. So part of FTC's stance has been be extremely active and will kill some mergers kind of in the crib. And I think that has worked. But as you said, on the activist side, the, the real reason she was hired, or at least Lena Khan's claim to fame prior to becoming FTC chair, was specifically about big tech and companies like Amazon. And on that, she's failed. So she's succeeded in lots of other industries, including some tech. There, there was this Ice Black Knight merger, which now looks like it's going to go through, but with major, major concessions. The FTC sued to stop it. They've now pulled the lawsuit because ICE has decided to divest major, major assets. But when it comes to those big tech companies, she hasn't been able to make a dent. And, and I do think she needs to win one, whether it be against Amazon or somebody else, in order to kind of push her agenda forward. Um, is anybody at Amazon worried? Worried is a big word. I mean, I, I don't think anybody wants... Again, we don't know what the details of the suit are, right? You know, for example, the FTC already sued once Amazon when it came to an inability to cancel Prime memberships, which is a lawsuit, but in the scale of Amazon, it's a, it's a tiny little thing, right? If, if it's something else like that, no. Uh, but it, it's a major distraction. I mean, the, the example everyone always goes back to is, you know, Microsoft 20, 30 years ago, and Microsoft ends up winning that case, but it, it arguably took so much time and so much effort, it took its eye off the ball and thus allowed Google to exist. Hey, Dan, uh, maybe a curveball just to pivot the conversation to the other big news of the morning, which is private equity uh, industry and venture capital. You know so very well um, the Biden administration planning to uh, effectively block um, that sector of our economy from buying into certain sectors of the Chinese economy. What are you hearing on the ground about it? Uh, I'm I'm extremely confused about it, and not that we weren't expecting this, we were. But but the specific and the language I want to see for two big reasons. One, you know, one of the sectors they're looking to block supposedly is AI or artificial intelligence. How do they define that? I think Andrew, as you know, every company right now defines themselves as an AI company, almost no matter what it is they do. So how does that actually get defined? And then two, this decision to do it specifically on private market investment, I, I find fascinating. It seems, again, like there's a massive loophole, which is if you're a Chinese AI company or quantum computing company, go public. And then apparently, you know, any U.S. venture capital firm or, or mutual fund or hedge fund could buy into you. So I, I am very curious to see the specific uh, language on that. And go public anywhere, right? I mean, even if there oh, are restrictions sure. in terms of listing in the United States, you can list in Hong Kong and, and be accessible to any investor out there. So there are plenty of... So do you think that they acknowledge that there's this loophole? I mean, it does seem I like because so we, private equity and, and venture capital money, it's ba basically almost nothing goes to China right now just because they don't I mean, want any, some, any part of it. So, I mean, some still does. There's still a bunch of Silicon Valley firms and, and not just ones that are, say, based in the Valley and every now and then make an investment in Beijing. But there are still a bunch of firms that have, you know, e almost equal Chinese arms and U.S. arms. Understandably, right, the idea was to be a cross-border firm originally. A bunch of those exist. Um, 
I think the specifics of this language are going to be really important. And I, and I don't think it's a surprise that this is a this is an EO that we originally thought was going to come out kind of in early February. That was the original plan. We're now in August. I, I think they have taken a lot of time to try to write this in a way that's going to be effective. But I, I'm I'm extraordinarily interested in seeing the actual language on it. But the the importance of it's significant, Andrew, from what you said earlier. Remember David Rubenstein, uh, one of the co-founders of Carlyle, used to say that America's greatest export was its capital. This is a way to eat into that.